I probably should have done this video sooner, but hindsight being what it is, we're just going to go ahead and do it now. The channel name, Florida Maquis, has its roots in a resistance movement that started back in World War II. After the Nazis overran France, there were a group of people that rose up and fought guerrilla warfare against the occupying forces. History remembers the French Maquis quite well, but it has almost completely forgotten the Spanish Maquis. The Spanish Maquis, <coughs> excuse me, were much more successful than the French Maquis were. You never heard of any great World War II battles occurring in Spain or around the Iberian Peninsula. This area was pretty much a no-go zone for Nazis. There was a man in charge named Franco that gave the Spanish Maquis all they could handle, but occupationally and operationally, that movement never took hold, meaning Francoist. The Maquis were able to keep society on such a teetering edge that eventually Francoist Spain was overthrown. We can see this sentiment today if we zoom out and leave Spain and we go here to Venezuela and parts of Colombia. This anti-fascist movement, this anti-globalist movement is pervasive all through here. They want to remain who they are. They want to remain their nation and they're willing to pick up weapons and fight for it. I thought the Florida Maquis would be a good place to start for our country since while it's not a very popular theory, my belief is the real invasion, the real takeover, is going to begin here, in Florida. We've heard all sorts of Red Dawn scenarios about coming over the pole through Canada. No, it's not how they're going to do it. This is where they're going to do it. They're going to start here. And if we don't start speaking out now about fascism, about globalist control, about Nazi-like choices by our leaders, we will never make it. By the time they realize there's a problem, they'll be all the way to Tennessee. Now, back over here for a moment. The Spanish Maquis were incredibly successful for one reason. They did not prescribe to the theory that they needed to match their enemy technology-wise. They only needed to be righteous, to be disciplined, and to be okay with things not always being so easy. That's a hard thing to describe. It's a hard thing to talk to a group of people about what being a resistance fighter is like when they've spent the last 8 to 10 to 12 years trying to find ways to maintain their cushy American lifestyle. When you see all of the prepper videos, when you see all of the uh, companies that come out and they want to sell you this and sell you that and give you all of these techniques, what you come to find out is that there's really, in a real shit at the fan moment, there's really not much you're going to be able to do about it. There's going to be some things you're going to mitigate, but you're just going to have to get good with being tired, with being thirsty, with being hungry, with being cold, or being hot, going without medication. You're just going to have to deal with that. And this is something the McKee had the grasp of. They understood that personal comfort was not something that they needed to have as a priority, and that's why they won. They were never enabled to oust them. The root of the term Maquis itself comes from the Maquis shrubland, because whenever the Nazi and fascist forces went out to go find these guys, this is where they were searching in all the time, this scrub and bush, and they could never, almost never find them. But the Maquis were able to, the Spanish Maquis, 
do some incredible things, and I want to read you an excerpt from a book called The Undefeated, 1945, written by Martha Gellhorn. During the German occupation of France, the Spanish Maquis engineered more than 400 railway sabotages, destroyed 58 locomotives, dynamited 35 railway bridges, cut 150 telephone lines, attacked 20 factories, destroying some completely, sabotaged 15 coal mines, took several thousand German prisoners, and, most miraculously, considering their arms, they captured three tanks. In the southwest part of France, where no Allied armies have ever fought, they liberated 17 towns. Also, during World War II, Spaniards assassinated the German generals von Schomburg, the commandant of Paris, and von Ritter, a recruiter of forced labor. <clears throat> In October of 1944, a group of 6,000 Maquis invaded Spain via the Aran Valley, and there were already Spanish Maquis there. They are talking here about the French Maquis. So these people using just the very basics and working together and being selfless were able to achieve amazing victories over fascism. That's just the uh, root here. I was just pulling up the uh, definition of the word Maquis. And here it is, says, the French expression, uh, prendre le maquis, is equivalent to the Italian, uh, guitarse al machia, and the Spanish, well, not Spanish, go to the mountain, English, go to the mountain. Basically, that was the idea. You had to become faceless, nameless, and blend in with the shrubbery. Now, what does this have to do with my channel? Well, a lot of people have asked me why I point a camera a phone, camera phone, at a laptop. It's my salute to the Maquis. In the very simplest way that I can possibly operate, I will. People ask, why don't you use OBS software, and why don't you use all these graphics, and all this other stuff that other channels do? This is my salute to the Maquis, operating as simple as could possibly be for the Internet literally taking one potato camera and pointing it at an old beat-up laptop, but having the information be the key. You never see me on the screen, and you never will, because it's not about me. It's about the ideas. It's about the information. It's about showing the people that come to my channel that you can find the truth for yourself if you only change the way you think. And that's a very hard thing to do. In today's society, we are inundated with images all the time. Things that uh, we can't unsee, things we can't unhear. I hope this channel can bring people out of that malaise out of, I don't want to say darkness, but out of the false light. Because while there's a lot of information out there, there's not a lot of good information. And the ability to discern the good information from the bad, objectively, is going to be a tool that is going to become more and more priceless. So, I don't want to waste a whole lot more of your time, but a lot of people think that it's based off the Star Trek Maki, and while they were trying to take a page out of that um, and take a concept from the 1940s and bring it into, at this case, what was the 1990s or 2000s, um, I think they missed a little bit, because here these Maki also take advantage of the same levels of technology as their fascist enemies do. And that's not how the Maquis worked at all. And, you know, in one episode here, they actually um, take charge of a, a, the Defiant, a, a starship, Deep Space Nine. This is something the Maquis would have never done. The Maquis would have taken something like that, and they would have probably just destroyed it. And let the visual of the destroyed um, 
item work for them in the minds of their enemy. So, and that's all I really wanted to say about this. I mean, it's a, if you're into video games, I guess it's a cool video game, but the idea is this. We need to maintain our sovereignty. We need to maintain our individualism, and we cannot let globalist forces come in and turn us all into one group of Borg, I guess is a good Star Trek analogy. So I'll leave it there. Ten minutes is usually where I stop. So um, thank you so much for the Patreon support. I very much appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you.